What do you think of snakes? For me, not a problem. I quite like them. That is, as long as they're behind thick glass. So being told I was going to a tiny speck of land off Brazil, inhabited by thousands of the most venomous vipers in the world, had me a little freaked out. Not surprisingly, it's known as Snake Island, and it's probably the most dangerous place on the planet. But as deadly as they are, the Golden Lancehead vipers are actually saving lives because their venom is being used to produce new blockbuster medications. So with science leading, I agreed to follow, even though I was always ready to run. A stunning splash of green in a sea of brilliant blue. Comada Grande, off the coast of Brazil, is a tempting patch of paradise. But this place, better known as Snake Island, is off limits. All are banned from landing here, unless you have special clearance. If the signs don't warn you off, the residents will. All 4,000 of them. Hidden in the trees and camouflaged on the ground, these are the Golden Lancehead Vipers, one of the top 10 deadliest snakes in the world. You don't want to be bitten by these snakes. With these snakes, it will be a particularly painful death. You're going to die screaming. You're going to die screaming. Great. So <laughs> why do you want to go anywhere near them? Kamada Grange is the mecca for venomous snakes. But talk to the local fishermen on the mainland and Snake Island is a place of legend, a place only fools would venture to. One of the main legends of the island is a terrible story. There was a family living there, the lighthouse keepers, and one night they were all bitten by the snakes and died. It makes people scared about going there. I believe the pirates had the snakes there for protecting their treasure. Would you ever brave the snakes to hunt for the treasure, to hunt for gold? No, no. No, I would not choose to do that because it's fatal. I would not risk my life to any gold, to any treasure. I don't think it's a good idea. So, ignoring good local advice, early the next morning, we prepared to head to Snake Island with a research team which will capture, tag and milk the snakes. So case of the early bird catches the snake in this case. Yeah, well, we want to get out before it gets too hot. My guide is Australian molecular biologist Brian Fry, a scientist mad about snakes who calls himself the Venom Doc. But as a sign of how seriously we and the authorities take this, we're travelling with a full medical crew armed with anti-venom, an artificial respirator and defibrillator. They also have an ambulance on standby. Let's just hope we don't have to use it today. Yeah. 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 No. Hope for the best and plan for the worst. This will be Brian's third trip to Snake Island. As a scientist, he is one of only a handful of people allowed to go there. One of my favourite places to go to. It's such a beautiful island. The snakes are so unique. The fact that they're deadly snakes, that doesn't worry you? No. No. That's your stop and trade. That's right? the fun part. You know, I, I don't work on butterflies. <laughs> you know. We are the first Australian media granted special access to the island. And so now we're heading 30 nautical miles off the coast of Brazil. As we approach our destination, Brian is right. Visually, the island is striking. Whoa. But from here on in, things become hazardous. Wait, wait, wait. With the help of Brian's Brazilian colleague, Philippe, the first test is getting on the slippery island. OK. Uh, Whoa. No, no, uh, and I fail. Sorry, sorry. Yep, I'm good. Just well, there's your dramatic entry onto the island. <laughs> That's the easy part, right? <laughs> Snakes, here we come. Great. <laughs> Before we head off into the wild, we need to protect ourselves. Snakes only, well, basically, they don't start fights, they end them. So as long as they don't feel threatened, they won't just bite you.
Our aim is to get to the top. Once we get into the forestry area, we'll be straight into our ideal habitat. But while our search for the vipers starts off easy enough... They're a sit-and-wait predator. Kind of think of them as a venomous landmine. <laughs> the climb becomes steeper and steeper. It's fun coming down here. Add in the 70% humidity and 40-degree day, and this is not a walk in the park. If you step on it, it'll try to bite you. What makes it harder is knowing that every time you grab onto a rock or tree branch to pull yourself up, you could be grabbing a killer snake. I've been told if you want to spot a snake here, to look for yellow or brown leaves. So I've been looking and wherever I look, up, down to the side, all I see are dead leaves. So to my untrained eye, these snakes could be anywhere and everywhere. And then we see our first. There. Where? On the ground in front of us. Moving up towards the rock. Hold the bag, mate. Philippe and Brian quickly bag it for the research team before spotting another less right than a metre right away. <laughs> Get me out of here. This one appears to be feeding on a dead bird, the main food source for the small but potent golden lancehead snakes. Nice little one, either juvenile female or medium-sized male. But that other one we got was a female because the females are much larger than males. As we get deeper into the jungle, it's clear we're the visitors here. Brian and Philippe still want to find more snakes to collect. Oh, here's one. To milk their venom. Gosh, they're hard wow. to see, aren't they? <gasps> so you can see by their camouflage how they look just like a pile of dead leaves. Yeah, in amongst all the other dead leaves. <gasps> oh, 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 sorry. So this one's primed for milking, for venom. Yeah, it's a nice large female. She'll be in this bag only temporarily. After the venom bag. is collected, she'll be released back into the wild. We could have stepped on that easily, couldn't we? Yeah, yeah. They're so incredibly cryptically coloured. It just makes you wonder about all the ones we haven't seen. Oh, definitely. For every one that we've seen, probably didn't see five. <laughs> Doesn't make me feel good at all. <laughs> but a healthy population of snakes is just what these scientists, led by Philippe Graziotin, want. They're collecting the snake's venom for research, as well as checking the well-being of the lance heads. So what they're doing is they're collecting all the information they can, the size of it, the weight, is it a male, is it a female? Are there a lot of ticks on it? Is the body condition healthy? So all of these things, long-term records, will give us an impression of what is the ecological health of the island. While the work is serious, the fun part for these two snake scientists is escaping the lab. My first true love, you know, is venomous snakes. Um. My father was a snake farmer, <laughs> so... I think that I was born with this gene. I, I, <laughs> I, I like snakes. <laughs> You're genetically predisposed yes, to snakes. Probably. Yeah. But to work with these killers, they first must be immobilised. They can't move. Most importantly, they can't bite. With it asleep like this, it's hard to believe that I'm actually holding one of the deadliest snakes in the world. But if it was to wake up and if it was to bite, it would not be good. Would it? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> the golden lanceheads do not exist anywhere else but on Comada Grande. Their isolation has given them some evolutionary quirks. They're five times more poisonous than their mainland cousins. And they hunt and eat birds. They may be some of the most venomous creatures on the planet, but the real threat is to them, not us. As idyllic as Snake Island might seem for snakes, its isolation is no guaranteed protection for its unique inhabitants. Land clearing on the mainland is reducing the number of birds that used to stop here on their migration path. Fewer birds means less food, and less food ultimately means less snakes.
just in the five-year cycle that I've been studying, I can see changes on this island. And it's really, really depressing for someone like me who is just in love with these kinds of animals. But this is an unnatural disaster. This is a man-made catastrophe that is symptomatic of what is going to happen for the rest of the world. Even if you're not so fond of snakes, there are good reasons to care about their future because their health could ultimately affect ours. So what are we protecting the snakes from? Because the snakes uh, are very special for us and then contamination can happen. At the centre for the study of venomous and poisonous animals, Rui Siabra is taking me into his venom lab where vipers, including the golden lanceheads, are studied. They're also milked to create anti-venom for a country that suffers 30,000 snake bites with 150 deaths a year. This is a precious liquid of the golden lanceheads. The golden liquid of the golden lanceheads? Yes, like a gold. How much damage could this cause? Yes, it's enough to, to kill three or five people. That's enough to kill yes, three or five people? maybe more. But this deadly liquid is also the key to saving human lives. We are developing a new medicine to avoid uh, clotting in human. So one of the most dangerous snakes in the world could help save people's lives? Yeah, to save lives. These types of snakes, lance-headed vipers, have already been responsible for life-saving medications, where, for example, if you know of anybody who's taking high blood pressure medication, odds are they're taking captopril or one of its derivatives. This is a drug class built off of a toxin from lance-headed vipers. It was invented 40 years ago, but remains today a $10 billion a year market. And this reinforces why we need to conserve all of biology, because we can't predict where the next wonder drug is going to come from. So even if we don't know it now, it could be responsible for medical miracles down the track. And that's exactly the key, is that we can only harvest what is still around. So if we lose the golden lancet, we might lose the next wonder drug. As a scientist, but a snake lover first, Brian Fry relishes what many would loathe. I think they're sweethearts. They're very gentle dispositions. Sweethearts. Getting up close and personal with this highly toxic creature in its rare and remote habitat. It's a really special place and it's somewhere that I feel a real emotional connection with because I'm completely in my element on a place like this. There's no annoying sounds of human habitation. It's just us in the jungle doing our thing. With the snakes. <laughs> Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.